Jeffrey, looking uh, looking mighty fine up there this afternoon in Napa Valley, California. What's going on there, son? Well, feeling mighty fine. It's a beautiful day here in the neighborhood. Yeah. It's, I well, mean, it's, I, it's, I, I, what was that movie? Uh, looking good, Lewis. Uh, feeling good, Billy Ray. <laughs> what was it? Uh, um, Trading Places, yes. wasn't it? With uh, Eddie Murphy yeah. and Dan Aykroyd. Uh-huh. Yeah. Looking good, Lewis. Feeling good, Billy Ray. Yeah. Those um, guys Those guys were having a pretty good time, I think. I think they enjoyed making that movie. Yeah, that's right. I think they had a good time. Uh-huh. Right. Um, okay, so uh, what I got for you today is, um, you know, epiphanies happen, can happen at any time. If, if we're present, if we're present in the moment, that's when epiphanies happen. And so sometimes the epiphany isn't the result of something positive happening. It can, but it can also happen many times when something negative happens. When you're in the throes of a fight, you're in the battle, yep. and, and you pull up something. And, and our friend Tim down there in Houston, he came up you know, in the first set of his very first round. Uh, near the end of the first set, he, you know, yanked his groin a little bit, and um, and he, so he lost the first round, and then he, uh, he, you know, wasn't sure if he was going to continue, but then he ends up winning the back draw. But that first match. Well, let me let me interrupt for one second ahead, for 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 those of you guys who don't know, with in the national events, the category ones, is that um, you get to play it. The consolation it's called the back draw and for if you lose your first match sometimes it's actually a second round too but, but let, if you get a yeah. buy if you get a buy in your in, in in the first round and then so that you go in the second round and you lose there that's your first match then you get to then you get to go into the back draw and the the back draw is where so much work gets done so much so other, much yes yeah. anyway sorry yeah. go ahead so, so anyway, I know that, you know, Tim had, um, he had some work done physical therapist and I, you know, the night of that match after the match and, um, you know, he got up the next day and decided he was in, he was going to go. And, yeah. and, you know, being on the court, he found he had to renegotiate his movement and renegotiate his game plan. And he discovered something. He discovered his forehead and something that we've been talking about, we've been working on. And he decided to let it out of the barn because wow. he, he didn't want to be in a 10, 15, 20 ball rally. Right. He needed to be a little more efficient with, with the point structure, how long it was going to be. And that doesn't mean that he was hitting winners. What it means, though, is that he hit a ball with a little more authority. He stepped into the court and took it a little earlier because he didn't want to back up. And he didn't want to have to go, <laughs> go heavy into the corners. Right. So had he not pulled his groin, that lesson, that epiphany may not have hit him for another event or two. Who knows? I mean, when that would have happened. But so anyway, so uh, the statement, the, the story there is just, you know, you as a student and, you know, and I consider myself, I'm still a student of the game is, is if you're in the moment, you tend to have more epiphanies than others. And they don't always come at the hands of a silver platter and something great happening. It can be at the hand of an injury. Yeah. And most most of the time, that's when the real epiphany can happen is, is you know, during those moments. So take it away. <laughs> well, look, I mean, I was I was down there in Houston with with our with our friend Tim. And and yeah, I mean, I remember when he when he came off the court and he said, yeah, I pulled the groin and and um and and so the next day he wasn't sure, right? He wasn't sure if he was going to go right. or not. And then, and then he decided to go, and it was kind of like. Well, yeah. the first thing was, we kept, you know, I was texting him. You just got to show up, Tim. Yeah. You just got to show yeah. up. Well, so that was I first, think he was, you know, because the the therapist did say, you know, you could do some more damage with this thing. So it's up to you. He said, you know, she 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 basically said it's the kind of injury that you could do some more damage. So. She said, I don't know if you're going to or not, but you could. Right. So you have to kind of figure out what you want to do. And I think he just said, you know what? I'm here. I don't want to go back after just playing one match and blah, blah, blah. And he, and he, and he right. wasn't playing doubles. So over the course of the next few days, you could see his excitement build. Because he really, after losing that first round match, he went into the back draw 
thinking, oh, God, oh man, I mean, could it get any worse? What happens if I lose this match now? And, you know, he, he, he pulls out a match. I mean, he, that, that was a brutal match. Yeah. He, he was down four out. one in the first set. And he, yeah. And he pulls it out and I, and I, and you could see it. He was just going kind of like, it was almost like, I, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't right. know I had that in me. And then he, he played another match where I think he played four matches in the backdrop. Maybe I know yeah. one of them was one of them. He, the guy defaulted, but the point is, I think he played another match where he was, he was in a dog fight. Yeah. And he did not know until he somehow pulled it out. And this is like a day later. And I see him in this excitement and his face is going, <laughs> I didn't know I could do that. And so you're absolutely right, Jeff. I mean, sometimes adversity is really the thing as opposed right. to getting all these po- all this positive feedback. Adversity sometimes where you don't know because you've never put yourself in that situation before. Right. You don't actually know what you're capable of. And right. you can get in the ball machine all day long. You can have someone feed you balls. You can, you can drill all day long. But that becomes... It just becomes kind of, I don't know, um, it's just not real. Well, it's, just not it's real. Safe. It, it's safe. And, and, and it's so, safe and there's, there's, no, there's no poking and prodding at, at your mental, emotional, physical, you know, test. Yeah. And, and like you said, there is a place, there's, there is a place in the time for that work, for the ball machine. You know, we're not poo-pooing the ball machine at all. But the the... You've got to get it, you know, you got to take this sharpened tool that we think we've sharpened and now go see if it can, you know, cut the mustard, right? Well, and I think it's, I think it's, it's more than that too. It's, it's not so much, hey, is my forehand working? Because by the way, Tim has always had a great forehand. Yes. That thing has been rock solid. And just like you said, he wasn't willing, he didn't trust it yet. He wasn't willing to let it out of the barn. Now he is. Um, but I don't think he would have gotten to that point unless he'd had some real adversity um, right. in in a couple of matches. And But I guess the point I'm trying to make is every day, you know, I, I, I would watch because I had matches too. So I'd be watching a little <laughs> bit of the stuff and, and I'd just be going, please, please, you know, please everything work out. Right. And yeah. And then I'd see him maybe a couple hours later and I'd be sitting there and he'd walk by and I I kind of you know, give him the thumbs up and he'd keep he, he, it's just so big funny. grin, right? Yeah, big it's like, grin. It's just big grin. It's like, <laughs> yeah, man, I got it. I got this thing. So it's fun to watch. And I think that, uh, you know, for for those of you who, and I, was, it, was it yesterday um, or a couple of days ago, we were talking about underachieving. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I think until you put yourself out there, and just like the example you brought up where someone, where all of a sudden you get injured, and now you can't bring out all the stuff you've been working on. Right. So now all of a sudden you're out there and, you know, it's like the sail in the boat is ripped. And right. the wind's blowing right through it and you're not going anywhere. So you got to get the oar out there and you're paddling away, paddling away. And, uh, and then the next thing you know is some favorable swell, you know, takes you where <laughs> you want to go. You end up in Aruba and everything's great. Um, yeah. But... Um, <laughs> I, I want to be on that boat. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, that's a great. I, I, I think that's good. So I encourage everyone, hey, tournaments is where so much of this stuff happens. And look, if you're just getting started, no question that you're not going to. I mean, the first tournament I ever played as an adult, I got beat love and love by a guy who I was winning half the sets, you know, with a practice. That was an right. eye opener. But you're going to get beat probably. You know, the first few times, and hopefully you're in an event where they have a consolation or a back draw, or right. even better, play both singles and doubles. Don't just <laughs> right. don't just cherry pick, you know, one event. Yeah. Just go play two events, at least get two nope. matches. Get as many matches under your belt as you can. Um, the other thing, too, when you're a newbie entering into these things, it's just the way the tennis universe seems to work. The likelihood of you playing a top seed early it's very high it just just works out that way i can recall you know from junior tennis on up it just seemed like you know i'm living in you know we grew up in palo alto and like i'm playing the fresno state you know the fresno city championships junior championships or whatever 
Saturday morning. Yeah, I'm Palo Alto. Guess what time your match is, Jeff? 8 a.m. How great. Right. <laughs> Can't right. wait, right? Yeah, that's right. And it's and it's against the third seed. Oh, even better, right? And who's, he's and he's local? local. He's local. He's he actually local. lives across the street. <laughs> right, and that's his club that he plays at. You know. Right. So anyway, um, it just seems uh, early in the in the development that that it just seems like that seems to be what happens, and that's just part of the game, and it's part of your development. If you embrace it, you just got to see all those matches as opportunity. Right. To learn right. what's what's so good about this guy who's right. seated number two or three. Right. Really? Yeah. You know. Right. Cool. So anyway. All right. Well, good stuff. Listen, uh, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. We're still offering a free private complimentary coaching call. It's only 10 minutes. So what we ask is that uh, if there's one thing in your game that you're struggling with, you want a different result from what you're getting with this one thing and you haven't figured it out, then uh, jump on a call with me and Jeff. Again, it's free, private, it's 10 minutes. And the way you get in that call is you go to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name and email address, and you'll get immediate access to our online calendar, calendar sure. scheduler. <laughs> and if you're already on our email list, at the bottom of any email you get from us, there's a, a link that will take you to that calendar scheduler god working through that one's tough i might need a free 10 minute coaching call on that jeff <laughs> anyway um so uh at this point of the podcast jeffrey this is where the the light shines on you yeah and it's your turn man it's your turn to ask the, hopefully ask the folks to do something hopefully the glare off my you know, forehead there isn't too bright well, as the light shines upon me. Yeah, there okay. you go, baby. I'm good now. I'm Let, fine now. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna lean it in. There it is, right there. So, if you would please like us, share us, please subscribe, and leave a comment below. Outstanding. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us again. Get out there today, help someone else have a spectacular day, and Jeff, we're gonna do this again tomorrow. Can't wait.